what would, uh, would T-Pain say? What's the point spread gone? How? Gone up! And it stays there. It stays there. I don't think, I don't think it's going to go back down. I think it's going to stay in this lane. What's up, everybody? Nick Costos here with the Board of Spreads, a.k.a. the Bracket of Spreads, presented by the great people at BetMGM, better known to you and yours as the king of sportsbooks. Download that BetMGM app and visit. I don't know why I got so close. Visit BetMGM.com. And honestly, candidly, I'm feeling something like a king myself these days because I absolutely dominated. We absolutely crushed. We sliced and diced the books. Sorry, BetMGM. Last week with the first round picks for the big tournament. Now, not only did we crush the bets, and you can go back and check, and by one of my outstanding producers, Mike said he's going to splice some of these in. Maybe this will be the spot that that happens. So let's play Northwestern plus the two and a half, and I think Northwestern wins this game outright. Let's play Yale plus the 12 and a half. Absolutely love it. My favorite bet of the region, Yale. I actually like, don't like a lot of the 12 seeds this year, but I do like Grand Canyon to cover the spread. Before we turn our attention to this week, we have to keep talking about how right I am for just another brief moment because not only were all the bets great last week for the first round of the big tournament, but we also have all four of the final four teams remaining in the bracket that we filled out last week. And that, of course, the Connecticut Huskies. That, of course, the Arizona Wildcats. That, of course, the Marquette Golden Eagles. And that, of course, the Purdue Boilermakers. Now my hand hurts. So we have all the final four teams. So the goal now is to give you winning bets coming up for the round of 16 on Thursday and Friday night in the big tournament. And we'll see if I like my teams in the final four to advance. Spoiler alert. I do. We'll start in the East region with the reigning defending tournament champion, the Connecticut Huskies, an 11 and a half point favorite against San Diego State. Now, this is only the fourth time in tournament history that we have seen a national championship game rematch from the prior tournament in this year's NCAA tournament. Now, we've seen it a couple times recently. How about 1991? Really famous game. Duke plays UNLV in the national semifinal in the final four, and they wreck Larry Johnson and Stacey Ogman and Greg Anthony and Jerry Tarkanian. Rest in peace. They wreck UNLV a year after UNLV wrecked them in the national title game en route to coach Kay and Duke's first national championship. And we saw it also in 2007, the year after Florida beat UCLA in the national championship game. Florida beat UCLA again en route to beating Greg Oden and Mike Conley in Ohio State to go back to back. The last time that we saw an NCAA tournament champion go back to back in college basketball. It also happened in like 1962 with Cincinnati and Ohio State, but honestly, like, who cares? So let's talk about this game with UConn and San Diego State. As San Diego State looking for revenge for last NC for last national championship game dropping at the hands of Danny Hurley and Connecticut. Will San Diego State get that revenge? No. No, they're not beating Connecticut. Absolutely not. And give San Diego State credit. They got to this point. The Mountain West is an absolute dumpster fire, but they got here to the round of 16. But who did they beat to get here? They beat UAB and they beat Yale. This is not exactly like beating North Carolina and Arizona back-to-back -back for San Diego State. So we credit San Diego State, but we also know the competition has not been terrific. But now they will play the best team in the country. They'll play the reigning defending national champion. They will play the Connecticut Huskies and they will surely lose the game. But I do think they can cover the spread. And I appreciate San Diego State head coach Brian Abdullah the Dutcher saying it's the UConn Invitational and we're just looking to crash the party. And I do think they'll crash the party to a degree. Now this point spread's already gone up and we're taping this a couple days before the games. It might go up a little bit more because let's be honest, who the hell wants to bet San Diego State in this game? Answer me. I want to bet San Diego State to cover. Maybe they lose by 10. Guess what? They lose by 10. They lose by double digits. You cover your bet. Give me the, not a bet with high confidence like some other ones more. Give me the San Diego State Aztecs to cover the spread against UConn. San Diego State plus the 11 and a half. And my God, how awesome is this game? And you want a styles clash here? We get great defense with Iowa State and TJ Pretzelberger, a.k.a. TJ Otzelberger. Great coach. It looks like he works out too. TJ Otzelberger at Iowa State taking on all offense with the third seeded Alliance. I think this game's so fascinating, and I mean this sincerely. You could tell me Iowa State wins by 10, I wouldn't bat an eyelash. Mostly because like I can't do like the people's the people's eyebrow thing. You could tell me Iowa State wins by two, no surprise. Illinois wins by 10, no surprise. Illinois wins by two, no surprise. So if that's true, and I can see a lot of different things taking place in this game, none of which would surprise me, then I have to play into volatility. And I will take Illinois to win the game. Illinois on the money line. And look, maybe Iowa State smothers Illinois the way Iowa State smothered Houston in the Big 12 Tournament Championship game. That's Iowa State's upside here. But let's be honest about something. Illinois ceiling 
is higher than Iowa State's ceiling. Illinois has the best player in this game in Terrence Shannon. If Illinois plays defense in this game, I think Illinois wins by multiple possessions here. So for best bet number two in the East region, give me the Illini on the money line to beat Iowa State. Now move to the West region here, anchored, of course, by North Carolina and Arizona, the one and the two seeds. And all you poor saps, and in all seriousness, if you made this bet, like, yeah, I'm kind of sorry because that sucks. I was on the other side that took Michigan State because, oh, my God, it's January, February, Izzo, and April. How'd that go last week against North Carolina? Because North Carolina is awesome. And look, I think Alabama stinks. I don't think this team's very good. But credit to Nate Oates and company getting back here to the Sweet 16. But again, did not exactly beat the best in competition to get here. Alabama beating Charleston in the first round. And they're like, did we watch the Grand Canyon game? Did you guys watch that game on Sunday? I, is this the stupidest basketball game that's ever been played? I mean, it looked like they were playing on ice. Like, it didn't even look like they was like a basketball game. It's the stupidest thing. I, Grand Canyon didn't want to run offense and set the entire second half. I know. I bet them. And I lost. And guess what I'm going to do this week with Alabama? I'm going to bet against them again, and I'm going to lay the points here with North Carolina. Now, worth noting, this point spread has gone up towards North Carolina. What would uh, what would T-Pain say? What's the point spread gone? How? Gone up. And it stays there. It stays there. I don't think, I don't think it's going to go back down. I think it's going to stay in this lane. I think it's going to stay in this range here for North Carolina, and that's because Alabama plays no defense. Now, we have to acknowledge, and we talked about this on You Better You Bet with myself and my co-host Ken Barkley on Monday, that Alabama's upside, the volatility with Alabama, is that Alabama can score 110 points in this game. And maybe Carolina can't score to keep up, but I think on average, Carolina wins this game by multiple possessions more often than it doesn't. So give me North Carolina, the Tar Heels march on to the final eight. Carolina laying the four and a half against Alabama. And uh, looking at these games here, I have betting takes on all four of the games on this region, on this side of the bracket, South and Midwest. I don't know what to do with this game. now. I think Arizona's going to win. I do think Arizona will beat Clemson and we'll get the Caleb Love Bowl coming up in the regional final. Great game with Arizona and North Carolina. You know, Clemson was really impressive and they kind of like beat the stuffing out of Baylor, tried to give it away at the end, but good job by Clemson. Beat the stuffing out of Baylor, beat the stuffing out of New Mexico. I love New Mexico. I was way wrong. I was one of my losers last week with New Mexico. So I give Clemson a lot of credit. I don't think Clemson can win this game, but maybe Clemson can cover the spread. My most lukewarm take here, Clemson plus the points, but Arizona wins in the final game coming up in the West region. Moving on now to the, this right, to the right side of the bracket and to the South region where, I mean, these are two unbelievable matchups coming up here. And the, the regional final that we might get if Marquette wins against either Houston or Duke is absolutely mouthwatering. So let's, we'll save Houston and Duke. We'll do Marquette and NC State coming up first. And credit to the Wolfpack. Don't turn your back on the wolf pack. You might end up in a body bag. That's not actually true. You won't die. That's what the lyrics said in that WCW you know, theme back in the late 90s with the NWO wolf pack. The NC State wolf pack, I think, a little nicer, a little more forgiving, except to their opponents over the course of the last two weeks. Obviously, win the five games in five nights to win the ACC tournament, and then taking down Texas Tech, and then taking down America's Sweethearts, Oakland, in the round of 32 to get here to the final 16. So great run for NC State, but guess what happens now? It's like the NWO black and white. When the NWO with Hulk Hogan would take down the Wolf Pack. Guess what's going to happen here? Marquette is the NWO for life, brother. And they're going to take down NC State here. Marquette has, now Donovan Clinton might actually, UConn might actually be like the best player in the tournament. But let's be real. Tyler Kolek of Marquette absolutely controls games. He's unbelievable. I know he's not as good as Kemba Walker, and I know it's kind of sacrilege to say that, but kind of similar in the way that they control the flow of every game that they're in. Again, to all the UConn fans out there, Kemba's better. I'm not saying they're the same player, but Kolek reminds me of him in that way and his ability to control a basketball game. And I certainly think he controlled this game against NC State. Great job by NC State to get to this point. I think Marquette's one of the five best teams left. Now, they might have to run into a team that's better than them. Hopefully not coming up in the regional final in the South region. But in this game, I think Marquette wins by double digits. Give me it, the six and a half, lay it with Marquette. Marquette wins by double digits against NC State. And my God almighty, this is as good as it gets in the round of 16. I know everyone out there loves upsets. Like, I, oh, how great would it be if Vermont had beaten Duke in the first round? You wanna see Houston against James Madison? Really? Like you, like schmuck watching this right now. You wanted Houston against Vermont. This is what you wanted. You wanted Texas A&M against James Madison. This is what you want. You want all these upsets, couple upsets fine here and there, but you don't want 
Houston against Duke. This is unbelievable. This is why we watch. This is why we love sports. Why we love to bet on games because we get matchups like this. Now Duke has, yo, Duke's ceiling is to be the best team in the country. Duke's got unbelievable talent. You can see it in spurts against Vermont and then in a couple different spots against James Madison where they put the pedal to the metal and they absolutely blow the opposition out of the water. Look, they can put together a full 40 minute game. They could definitely beat Houston. Let's be real here. Houston probably should have lost in overtime to Texas A&M. What a collapse at the end of the game. Everyone fouling out. You might not know this. It was actually me. I came in to shoot those free throws at the end of overtime for Houston. That like small white kid, the walk on, it was me making, it was me, damn it, making those free throws for the Houston Cougars. But Houston, it had its clunker and it survived. And now you know what happens to Duke. You know what happens to Duke? The same thing that happened last year to Duke in the second rounds of the tournament last year when Duke played Tennessee. And Duke got absolutely out physical. Duke got abused in that game by Tennessee. Kyle Filipowski bleeding at points in that game. Duke got embarrassed, got pantsed by the more physical, the more aggressive team in Tennessee. Guess what happens here against Houston? Guess what happens against Shed and Roberts and Cryer and Sharp and everyone else that fouled out last week against Texas A&M? Houston, gonna, gonna, I think, gonna slam Duke in this game. I think Houston wins this game by seven or more points. Give me the coups of Houston laying it against Duke to advance to the regional final. And we wrap up the best bets coming up for the round of 16 in the big dance in the Midwest region. And oh man, and I said it last week, like in all seriousness, like the human race has been, well, I've had a nice run here. The, the earth might go off its axis and hurtle into the sun if we get Matt Painter and Rick Barnes in the regional final, that one will make the final four. We are a couple days away from that potentially being, or if you're watching this later in the week, today, from this potentially happening. So let's talk about it. Are we gonna get the matchup of Painter versus Barnes? Let's start with Purdue and Gonzaga. You're know, talking with my co-host, Ken Barkley, on You Better You Bet, my show presented by BetMGM this past Monday. We both agree, and you know I love Purdue. I picked Purdue to go to the Final Four before the start of the tournament. I said that Matt would paint his masterpiece for the Purdue Boilermakers. And I think we're kind of in agreement here, where I think a lot of people are going to like my buddy John here. We like Gonzaga right in the game. It's a lot of points. We've seen Gonzaga get there before and look like Mark Few has never won a national championship at Gonzaga, but they've had a ton of tournament success, all the million sweet 16s in a row. So I think people will see the point spread and say, wow, like Gonzaga in the game at this number. Not me. Let's take a trip in the old time machine, hot tub or not. And we'll go back to November 20th, right around Thanksgiving. And we will go to Maui, the Maui Invitational, where Purdue and Gonzaga played. And Purdue won that game by 10 points. Now, what does that have to do with this game? Nothing. But I figured I'd say it because Purdue's already beaten Gonzaga by double digits earlier this season. And damn it, it's going to happen again. I like Gonzaga's guard play. Let me ask you this. How are they stopping Zach Eady? People are like, oh, well, Zach Eady's tall, so he's good. I don't, I've seen plenty of tall guys not throw up 30 and 20 in the NCAA tournament. I think Zach Eady's pretty good. Who won Gonzaga is stopping Zach Eady. I get it. Gonzaga's been there and Gonzaga's done that. You've heard of the movie though, A Few Good Men? This is a few bad losses for Gonzaga in the tournament and we're gonna get another one coming up against Purdue. Make it three Boilermakers. Let's take Purdue to cover the five and a half. Purdue laying it against the Zags in the Midwest region. And we will close with Tennessee and Creighton. Now, we talked about the winners I had last week. If you listen to you better, you bet. You know, loved Oregon on Saturday night against Creighton. There are some losses that make you feel like you wanna like throw something against the wall where you watch it and you feel like you're in a fever dream. That was me with Oregon against Creighton. Watching the game go to double overtime and Creighton wins by 13 and you lose the bet with Oregon. So I'm yeah, maybe a little biased here against the Creighton Blue Jays, but similar to what we talked about with Houston, Tennessee last week, a historically poor shooting game for the Vols in the second rounds against Rick Barnes, old team, Texas. Could not make a three to save their lives. Dalton Connect, uncharacteristically bad. But guess what happened? Tennessee did not get bounced. Tennessee advanced to this round in the tournament. And because Tennessee got that clunker out of the way, I am now expecting Dalton to connect. It's easy on a bunch of three-pointers in this game. I think the point spread's a little short here. I'll take the Vols to win by three or more, and I think we will get it. Purdue against Tennessee 
in the regional final. Painter v. Barnes with the berth in the final four on the line. So final bet coming up for this round of 16 in the NCAA tournament. Give me Tennessee laying the two and a half against Creighton. And there you have it. The best bets coming up for Thursday and for Friday. Get those bets in. Visit BetMGM.com. Download that BetMGM app and visit the King of Sportsbooks. And you can check us out. You better you bet on Saturday morning. Giving you all the picks for the weekend. Presented, of course, by the King of Sportsbooks. BetMGM.